It's a cold blast of realism. We've had the economy being talked up on the basis of the stock exchange reviving, prices of luxury houses in London and booming bank bonuses. The fact is that in the real world, things are still pretty grim. Unemployment's continuing to rise, and in many parts of the country, this recession is not just continuing, but worsening. That this was an enormous shock to the system. It's a, a big economic heart attack. So it's not surprising that a lot of damage has been done. I think, actually, the intervention, particularly the Bank of England, the very low interest rates, the creation of credit, all these things have helped to stabilise the patient. But a lot of damage has been done and recovery is going to be difficult and slow. I think a lot of the things that have been done were necessary and are working in preventing a bad situation getting worse. There are some things that are not happening that should be happening. The government has rescued the banking system, taken over half of it. But the banks have lurched from extreme uh, recklessness to extreme conservatism. Credit is still not flowing on reasonable terms to good British companies who want to expand, keep going in business. They cannot get the credit and are having to shut their doors in many cases. And this is making the recession unnecessarily worse. I think there are things that the government could and should be doing. Uh, the government's taken over the banking system, or half of it. Uh, it should be using its position uh, in the nationalised, semi-nationalised banks to make sure that credit is going to good British companies that are credit worthy, they're not getting their money at the moment, are on very unreasonable terms, and this is making the recession worse. Well, unemployment is continuing to rise. It will rise well into next year estimates of around 3 million and that's particularly difficult for young people. We're seeing very large numbers of school leavers and young graduates who cannot get work. Uh, but quite apart from that, the, you know, many sections of the population have been hurt by this. Even retired people, of course, are losing their income. They're not getting money through their pension schemes, not getting interest on, on their deposits, as well as people in work. I think it's very unlikely that the Bank of England is going to risk increasing interest rates or stopping the creation of credit quantitative easing in, with the economy in such a fragile state. We've got a patient that's in intensive care, it's been rescued from a disastrous heart attack, but it still needs the monetary steroids, and unfortunately. So this artificial support's going to have to continue for some time yet. I'm not in the forecasting business, but it's clear that the recession is bottoming out. But the question is, will the British economy recover properly? We have a whole lot of problems ahead of us. Uh, there is still an enormous amount of personal debt. People are reluctant to spend. The banks are not lending properly. The government's got this enormous deficit that it's going to have to close in the next few years. It's very difficult to see where the long-term revival of the British economy is going to come from unless we get real leadership from government. Well, I think the government are politically in considerable difficulty. They talked about Gordon Brown personally about a world with, with no more boom and bust and we've got this bust that's just going on and on. It's severely damaged his reputation and the government's reputation. And the way things are looking at the moment, we're not going to get a big revival before next spring.